All these people are making all these tier lists out there right now for Guilty Gear, saying they know who's the best and who's the worst and which character is broken and which characters are uh, underplayed and which characters are overlaid. And I'm like, what are these bitch ass tier lists? What point did the entire fighting game community lose all of its spirit with all these tier lists? Disgusting, I say. We're gonna make the real tier list for Guilty Gear. My tier list is going to focus on the thing that is the most important for Guilty Gear that has gotten it to the point that it's at right now. My tier list is for character visuals. Which character looks the best based on the previous version of the game? An actual tier list, not all this like, this character plays better than this character, her, her, nah. My tier list is going to be which character looks the best based on their previous iterations of the games. Let's do what needs to be done, right? Let's actually create the, the tier list that everyone has been requesting. All these weird bitch made tier lists of people that have no idea what they're talking about, saying which character's better in Guilty Gear than other characters, complaining that characters are too good. What they're asking is the wrong question. Those people are truly not aware and prepared to ask the real questions. All of your tier lists are incorrect. I'm here to present the actual tier list chat. As someone who thinks this game looks great, I think the characters look better in Strive than they ever have. Let's take a look at Soul Bad Guy. This is Soul and he's a bad guy. Uh, he's definitely a bad guy to the majority of people that are playing against him right now. I would argue his character design is incredible like right off the bat th we're having a main character get redesigned and i think this bitch possibly gets a 9 out of 10 in terms of visual identity overhaul right every character in this game gets super buff like everyone gets immaculately huge and buff and that's just sort of the way it is but i think the way this guy looks now especially considering the previous versions here's what soul bad guy looked like before and holy crap dude the guy like almost looks like he has a fro like his hair was so big and crazy like it's almost funny looking he got a haircut he got a jacket and i still think this one is cool but damn is the new one way better like just so much better and he's still like roided out and crazy buff in the old one but he looks like he woke up out of like he has bed head yeah he stuck his head into a dry cleaner and then he's like, whoa, I'm ready to go. I think this is a dramatic improvement over the previous game's character design. I like it a hell of a lot more. So I'm going to start off with Soul Bad Guy as a 9 out of 10. Uh, we have the other Shoto of the game. His name is Koi Kaisk. I, I have some extreme feelings about Kai in this game. Kai really arguably changed even more than Soul Bad Guy. Like this character design is so much different than what he was before. It's so much more like, and a lot of people use this term incorrectly. People say that Guilty Gear Strive characters are rooted in reality. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Okay, no, they're not. What you mean is that they're more grounded, right? And by more grounded, it means the character has roots in something that is a little bit less fantastical. And Kai definitely in the past was a very fantastical looking character. This is one fantastic looking bitch. Holy hell. Everything is almost like over the top and zany to the point where it's kind of like goofy, you know? He almost feels like he should be in blaze blue with this design. He's a beautiful princess. I mean, he sort of is. I feel like keeping the foundation of the character with this design, they did a ridiculously good job. Where it still absolutely feels and looks like Kai in almost every single way. The design definitely matured in a way where it has changed to more realistic clothing. The dude is just wearing pants, right? He just is just wearing crazy holy Jesus pants and a jacket. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that Kai Kiesk is possibly another 9 out of 10. Like, he's better looking than he ever has been before. Oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. Ms. Totsugeki herself. So here's the thing. If I'm going to be judging characters, it's definitely going to be based on a lot of my personal preferences of how characters look and shit like that, of what I prefer characters to be like. And I think Mei is also a significant improvement. In comparison to Mei of the past, this is a stark difference, right? Like it almost looks like the character, if we're talking just in terms of like an actual age range, it looks like Mei and, and Strive is like 10 years older than what Mei was going for in this one. Characters in Exard had 
big dresses, right? Like even even male characters and female characters, they had a lot of stuff around their waist that was like coattails and big things that would flow in the wind and stuff like that. Instead, in Strive, they flip that shit on its head and they throw that stuff over their shoulders. So once again, Mei now has a jacket. They just give her a jacket. And they move things like her belts and everything like that, her giant belt buckle, to something a bit more consolidating on her backpack. May is a character I would never play. She's not a character that I'm specifically very excited for. But I think May is like a solid 8 out of 10. Like this is a very good redesign of a character once again taking things that they had before and instead of having them just be there for aesthetic purposes, this is just here and she has things on her that are just there. They put them on the new character in ways that it makes a lot more sense. It's more functional. Oh, man. Oh, man. So I hate this motherfucker for gameplay reasons, obviously. I'm a Leo player. I hate this guy. But this bitch is a 10 out of 10. Why is Axel a 10 out of 10, you say? This is the best that Axel has ever looked. I want you to see what Axel looked like. This is a screenshot of Guilty Gear PlayStation 1, and this is what Axel looks like. He's a lot more grungy, right? He definitely is 90s man here. If we go back to Exard, once again, what happened? They took away this, the, the, I didn't even realize he had, this dude is like wearing a flag around his waist. And did they take that away? They didn't. They consolidated it once again to his fucking belt, which is a really good call. They made the character genuinely look cool. From this to this? Dude, I don't know, man. I think we honestly have like our first 10 out of 10. I think this character is actually a 10 out of 10 redesign. Uh-oh. Oh my god. So here's the thing. I don't think y'all appreciate Chip Zanif's redesign enough. Here's the problem, is that Chip isn't getting enough credit for his redesign. Yes, his belt looks like a couple of huge ass nuts. I get it. But you are not appreciating this character's redesign until you go back and you look at what he was like before. Yeah, so things have certainly changed. What, what was the biggest thing that changed the most? Obviously, the dude is buff as fuck, right? This arguably might be the buffest character in the game even next to Potemkin. The hair got grounded, right? The hair becomes a little bit more quote unquote realistic. But for the most part, this dude doesn't really look like he has a lot of ninja elements on him, in my opinion. Like other than the fact that he has like a traditional gi and like big pants, this dude almost looks like he'd be a fucking basketball player. And I don't know, I, I think obviously giving him different shoes and changing his main costume here, to me, this makes a lot more sense with him actually being a ninja. Like, this just feels way more appropriate. I think the only thing that doesn't make sense is his big-ass belt, which wasn't there at all before. It was just a couple of things here. But they kept almost every single element and just pushed it a little bit. His sash is now huge. His blade is way bigger than it was before. And he's way buffer. Like, they just, they just took everything and went to 11. You know what I mean? I think Chip looks cooler than he ever has. So much to the point where, for me personally... I think Chip Zanif is an actual 10 out of 10 as well. Like, this character is so fucking cool looking in this game that I love it. I think he might be one of my favorite redesigns in the entire game in general. So, Potemkin. Um, this is an interesting one because if you're just looking at Strive Potemkin, your brain is already thinking, he doesn't look any different. Nothing much changed. But let's actually go back to the previous game and look at what he actually was like. And yeah, you know what? Like, there isn't. He still has the same boots. He almost has the same gloves. Things are just more detailed now, right? Yeah, he had really big ass shoes before. In fact, I mean, it, the, the one thing that has changed the most is that his proportions are a bit better to um, represent his size. Look at the size of his fucking head here, chat. And look at the size of his head here. He looks way bigger. And what's the best way to make a character look bigger is to shrink their head. So I think that's a really good call. And I think in game, he, he looks bigger than he ever has. But in terms of like a dramatic redesign over the previous game, I feel they were pretty conservative. And while I, I definitely think this one is better, it doesn't invoke any crazy emotions. You know what I mean? Show older Potemkin, that's a good call. There's where you get some of the really crazy changes. 
you know? When he changed in Guilty Gear XR, that was a big adjustment. Like, whoa, he's like ironclad now. In this comparison, it's like, I think this one is great. I think this is like a 9 out of 10 in comparison to this. Well, this is just generic big dude. You know what I mean? But since we're talking about like Strive and how Strive has changed character designs from previous versions of the game, I think Potemkin's kind of like a 6. Uh, I still think he looks great and I think he looks way better. Definitely isn't that much of a jump in comparison from the previous design to the new one that invokes a crazy emotion out of me. You know what I mean? Oh man. So here's the biggest change of them all. Faust. This is the third major transformation of this character. And now they went directly for a horror trope in this one. To me, like they're trying to go for a Zappa kind of thing here. And for anyone that doesn't know what Zappa is, this is uh, Zappa from either Guilty Gear XX. I can't remember exactly which game he came from. He's, he's like, he, he literally is manipulated by a ghost. Like he's got the Ringu, you know, girl that sort of hangs around and helps him fight and stuff like that. I feel like that's what they're trying to do with this dude, right? Like they are, they are specifically going for the horror route with Faust in comparison to the character from the past. And yeah, that's a big fucking change. To me, Faust was always the cartoon character, you know, outside of Baldhead. Faust felt like he was a Looney Tunes character in Guilty Gear. And now he's not really like that. Now he is something very different. They're just trying to go for a character that's disturbing looking. Is this guy grounded? Definitely not. Like this, this dude is about as weird as this dude, but he's meant to be like the deviant of the roster. Faust went from being a Mary Poppins character to fucking Beetlejuice. So it's really different. And of course, I'm gonna like the Beetlejuice version of him way more. So I'm gonna personally give Faust like an eight out of 10. I think that's a very polarizing kind of character to change. I'm super curious for people that love, like were Faust mains over the many years, how they feel about his actual character design, like just visuals, not gameplay. The Mary Poppins version of Faust, the cartoony Mary Poppins to essentially like Beetlejuice version of the guy. All right, so here's the thing. Melia's design is fucking amazing. I hate it because I have a stupid friend that's been playing this character against me for like 20 years, dealing with her shit, but I genuinely think Milia looks better here than she has ever looked, ever. And let's go back to the previous game to give, to give a little bit of comparison. This is the same exact way that I feel about Kai, right? They kept so many elements that make sense with her character design from the previous game. It's like, these are almost the same thing in many ways. Like she has the big coat, she's got the boots, the hat, the hair, but now it just looks so much better. This is almost like, can be like Tenchi Muyo in many ways. I'm, I'm talking from my old boomer anime perspective. And this is more like Cowboy Bebop. You know, I just prefer the cooler focused direction. Once again, if I was designing a character and I had the insane artistic talent of the, the dudes that designed Guilty Gear characters, this is 100% what I would have done with a character like Melia. And she looks better than she ever has looked before. So I'm giving Melia a 10 out of fucking 10. Here's an interesting one. To me, the biggest thing that changed in Zato, because he seems very familiar, obviously Eddie is the biggest difference because uh, the, the look of the creature changed into something that looks more like Studio Ghibli. Before he was like Alice Cooper. This really does not scream that much different, but it's crazy how much better uh, Eddie looks. I think the simpler design of, of this stuff is so much better. Look at his arms. I know, he's hella buff. He's actually hella buff in this. The craziest, thing about what Zato looks like now in comparison to like older Eddie. He was just a hell of a lot skinnier. A lot more, I guess, androgynous in his old poses, like in his old Jojo poses and stuff like that. I think the best comparison we have is P Potemkin, you know? He's still absolutely androgynous. It's just that they really exemplify like obviously the male muscle parts of him way more. I think at least there is one element on here that makes him a bit better. Eddie is so much cooler. Like, the demon that he's controlling is so much cooler looking in this game than he was in the previous game. And all the different crazy shit he transforms into, it's better than it ever has been. I think it has more personality, I think it's funny, I think it's like cute, I think it's scary, like, it does all these crazy things that are animated beautifully and is a simpler design. I think I'm gonna give Zato like a 7 out of 10. There's a couple of characters in the roster that, that feel pretty similar in Zato and uh, Potemkin are a couple of them. Oh man, I'm gonna, 
I don't even know how this one's gonna go. So uh, on first glance, Ram seems like she looks the same. So in my brain, she immediately looks the same as the previous game, which is probably a good thing. We're gonna go check out the classic game, and I think that was the point, right? I think design-wise, they wanted to hit all the same beats as the previous game. I think the previous Ram, when we go back to it, is going to look just less cool. Because this character does look pretty cool, right? Well, this, this bandage shit they got going on here, the fact that she's like, She's got the cloak, which I think she had in the previous game too. The meat cloak, whatever the hell it is. Damn, she had these huge ass bunny ears. It really does look some. Oh, they got rid of the underboob thing. I see. They kept the hot pants and yeah, that was about to say this, this, these elements weren't there in the previous version of the character. They weren't. They essentially removed a little bit of the less tasteful elements of the character, a little bit less of the fan service, and they went for cooler, right? They want her to be more like brooding and creepy looking and threatening looking without her having just giant spiked alligator teeth. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think this is a lot better. Yeah, I think this is just like a, once again, a way cooler version of the previous character. I, it's like Milia, you know? I think Ram looks good, but not to the point where I'm like absolutely blown away just because of the my personal tastes with her character design. So I'm gonna give her another seven out of 10. I think this is a seven out of 10. And this, this to me would be like a, a five or a four. Oh, I have some opinions. Oh man, do I have some opinions? Here's the funny thing. Like this is the character that I that I played in Exard the most for sure. I made very little deviation, so I kind of remember a lot of Leo from Exard when I'm when I'm thinking about this guy. Number one, this is 100%. The other character we can compare this to is Kai because look back at Leo here. And we're gonna see some very crazy differences. Okay, so Kai and Leo are from like a similar faction, like the Holy Order stuff, right? In, in older Guilty Gears. And in the exact same way, what do we do? Oh, take away the crazy like dress thing around their waist and give them a jacket. Take away their weird anime tight pants and give him just some fucking khakis. Give him some combat khakis. I think a lot of parts of this design really look good but i have a weird soft spot for this old ass version of leo you know i don't get it when i look back at this version of leo i really don't like the pants i don't like his huge well once again like the huge waist dress thing that he's got i think i like his hair being a bit bigger yeah you know what now that i think about it now sh shit dude it's i have very conflicting opinions his new design is a lot better it really is so many things are still here it's just this one looks way better. Biggest thing that changed with him was his default pose. Like, anyone remember how Leo posed in, in Exard? He would be hunched over and he would do this. So his pose was like the blades going out this way in, in the old game. And to me, it was always a very weird default pose. And then they changed it in the new game, where instead he's once again, he's doing this stuff, but he's front facing and he's addressing the character that way, so he's essentially doing this. A lot smarter, in my opinion. The weird part is that I'm, I'm not completely in love with either one, but I can acknowledge that it's better in several ways. I'm still only giving it an 8. It's not like a 10 out of 10. It's not. I don't think this is one of like the best, coolest, craziest looking characters in the game. Uh, we don't have much to compare here. I mean, do I even need to say anything? Guilty Gear comes out with a brand new original character, one of the first shown off of the game in the very first trailer over two years ago now. And, um, he looks so fucking cool, it hurts. Almost to the point where I wish that there was a bit more of approachability with his gameplay and the blood system. That blood system throws me off so much. Like, in terms of, like, managing and figuring that stuff out. And he's supposed to be a vampire? And there's like, I don't, I don't know if I get a lot of vampiric elements. And I think this is obviously one of the more exorbitant designs in the whole game, especially with the mask on and all like crazy keep out signs and belts and everything like that. Their approach to all the different characters in Guilty Gear Strive was to like upgrade the characters and make them look as cool as possible. But now they don't have a character to move from, right? Nago is his own original character in this game. Well, now we just get to start from scratch and just making, let's just make the coolest looking character we possibly can have. I think Nago is a nine out of 10. And I think the only thing that I'm giving him a nine only because I think he's got a bit too much shit all over him. So much stuff. And I, I get what they're going for the classic samurai garb, right? But in a different way, they're going for all of this like loose top clothing, the Hakama kind of stuff. Yeah. 
they're trying to do that, but they're trying to push it in a direction that is like, it is that, but not that, right? I think he could be more vampire. I think that's what I'm getting at. Oh, and then, of course, my stupid interpretation of this character is the fact that I know that her dog doesn't do crazy cool stuff. I'm trying to have that not have an impact on interpretation of her character because when she came out, she was so cool, right? Everything about her was so fucking cool looking. It's like, dang, this is easily like the coolest Guilty Gear character. But if we were to boil it back and we take Geo to be a brand new Guilty Gear character, I think Nago is a cooler looking character than any of the newer characters that were in Guilty Gear, the x series. 100%. But if we're talking about Guilty Gear Strive specifically, I think I do have to give it up to Geo. I think in terms of a character design, I'm giving her a 10. I'm trying to put my put my my brain back into the perspective of watching her her reveal when she first came out, having the perspective of like a, a brand new female character being what she is and the fact that she was like a cop and she has a dog and I and I didn't know the fact that the dog was just a scarf. I think so much of Geo is exactly what I think makes cool female fighting game characters, you know? Like, it's like top tier shit of what I love about really cool female fighting game characters that look badass, can do badass things, even though they, she doesn't do the stuff that I really wanted her to do. I think she genuinely is a sick as fuck looking character. Angie Mito. I think Angie remains pretty traditional, right? We got to go back pre Exard uh, to take a look at this dude. But I think Angie feels like a fairly traditional kind of character in comparison to his previous design. Actually, no. I'm fucking... I'm wrong. This dude is crazier looking than he ever has been. I am totally wrong. Like his old character design is slightly boring. I think this has way better color balance. I do think the new one is better. He's always been stripper fan man. He's always been that, right? That's just the way he is. But now he gets super traditional, like more Japanese garb type of stuff. He has like the big Hakama style pants and shit like that. You know what I really think it is? I think I think the the color design, way they use color to tell to tell story on these characters is so much better. Now that I'm really looking at these characters next to the old designs, especially stuff like, you know, characters that have their older designs in, in Xard and the way that they look. I think the use of color is some crazy next level shit. That's probably something that isn't getting enough credit in terms of like, oh, more grounded characters and stuff like that. I think the newer Angie is, has effectively fucked up the classic design of the character where it's hard for me to even think of what he was like before this now. Uh, I think I'm going to give Angie a 9, you know? I think I'm actually going to give him a 9 out of 10. This character, like, legit made me like, I don't think he looks that much different than the old games. And then you go back to the old game and you're like, holy fuck. In fact, the newer design makes the older design look kind of bad in comparison. Oh, here's a good one. Oh my god. Look at this badass bitch. Holy shit. So cool looking. Holy hell. Let let's go back and take a look. I need to see this. To me, a lot of the old design is... Feels... Comes across as being, like, simple now. Right? Like, for some reason, this feels so much more dynamic. Making her not just have, like, this, this weird, like, latex leather skirt thing. Once again, giving her a jacket. Because this design of Eno, to me, doesn't seem that much different than the older classic Guilty Gear XX version of the character. I, I think everything about this design, including how they are showing her skin to sort of, like, have, her, have it fix her, her poses, Right, because some of this stuff in the middle can actually get lost in terms of how the character gets posed. There's so much red going on here. Way fucking better. They took away, you know, the fact that she was naked boba underneath all this stuff. I get it, and that was disappointing for a lot of people. Okay, but everything about this version of the character design is better. I think almost everything about this is better. Even this big comical belt serves as a much better visual identifier of where her legs and waist are. It keeps everything from the previous iteration of the character, but just makes it significantly better. Just makes it better. I'm debating giving her a 9 or a 10. I really am. I think I want to give it a 10. I think she's genuinely, insanely... Sh she just has such way more... Su such more like personality through every facet of her character design in the newer one. Just going off the character design part, you know what I mean? I, even the hat getting comically big. This is the stuff that I genuinely love about fighting games, right? Like reevaluating how characters look and how, how they change characters in, in terms of approachability. Not This is before gameplay, before modes, before systems. Like this is honestly one of the things that is the most important in fighting games. How do your characters look? Do your characters look cool enough or captivating enough 
that will inspire or get people to want to just buy the shit out of your game. This isn't a game that has like a deep rooted giant legacy. It is super niche for the past 20, almost five years. And only so many people really knew about it up until a few years ago. So to be like, okay, well, if we want to make our game a bit more approachable, even before you get to gameplay, even before you get to systems and netcode, the most important thing is obviously the way your characters look. I think Guilty Gear Strive, I think one of the most important things it did was to make the characters look better than they ever fucking have by a metric ton. By an absolute shit ton.